Welcome to Buckets. My name is Matt Moore. I'm the senior NBA writer, and this is your daily NBA betting best bet show brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook and the Action Network. Glad to have you with us. I'm senior NBA writer Matt Moore, joined by J Money. You can find him on Twitter at J Money is Money. J, how you doing tonight? Doing all right, man. I'm living, we breathing, can't really complain, man. Ready to talk some NBA with you guys and get to some cash. We also got Sean Little from MSG Networks. You can follow him on Twitter at Chicago Flow. Sean, how you doing? I'm good, fellas. Happy to be here, ready to talk some NBA, man. I've been going back and forth, hot and cold. I'm ready to get on track starting right now. I, uh, I've been conservative the last two days. I took Celtics last night, and that was a breeze. Took Knicks tonight as we record this on Tuesday night, and that was a breeze. So hoping that we can figure, uh, keep it going here, as well as uh, want to shout out analytics capper Albert Wynn, who he had Cooks. Mavs money line and Jay backed that play up. And what do you know, <laughs> the Mavericks national TV home game came through. I'm going to be looking for more of those spots. We'll see if we can find another juicy one uh, sometime. Want to let you know that everything we talk about today can be found in the award-winning Action Network app. Best way for you to track your picks. You get up to the second information where the bets and money are coming in on. You can find this show, all of our podcasts, Big Bets on Campus has a complete college football playoff breakdown. I have a big-ass position on mm-hmm. Ohio State. I hedged appropriately last weekend, so I'm going to be fine. Uh, I I bet I hedged with a no on them at plus 250 to win the, the Big Ten. So I already cashed on that. Would really like it if they got into the playoff, though. So I'm hoping those guys are, are wrong. Stucky doesn't think that Ohio State deserves to get in. Uh, shush, Stuck. I need need some help here <laughs> on that one. Uh, you can check that out in the app as well. as You can follow these guys' picks in there. My picks are in there. I'm putting in another futures play that's uh, NFL, NBA. I love those those cross sport parlays and we have one of those on the futures play here in a little bit. Uh, but this is your best bet show. So we'll go ahead and we're going to run down what the best bets are. And then we'll break down the cap on them. Jay, we'll start with you. Jay money is money on Twitter. Jay, what's your best bet for Wednesday night? Yeah, uh, I could make a lot of them to be honest with you, but right now I'm only, the only thing I bet so far is wolves and Kings, but I would say some honorable mentions uh, would be the Cavs and the Pelicans. Okay, uh, we've got the Kings minus four and the Wolves plus four. That opened at five, the Wolves did. That one's already on the move. Um, I think the Kings line moved as well as I checked the award-winning Action Network app. Uh, Sacramento in that game opened up at three and a half. It opened uh, three and a half. It's up, up to four and a half. So a little bit of extra money coming in on the Kings in that one. Uh, all right, Sean, what's your best bet for Wednesday? I'm also on Kings minus four and a half. I really like the spot here. I have some other plays that I'm going to get to to get to the window later at some point, either tonight or in the morning. I do love the slate. But for right now, Kings minus four and a half is my favorite play of the night. I love this slate. I love it. I have too many best bets. I have too many. I already know it's going to be a rough night because that's just how this stuff goes. And I, <laughs> I, I accept that. I welcome that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and give several uh, that I'm playing. I will take Celtics minus eight. I will take Nets minus five and a half. And I'll take Knicks plus five. And I, I actually found a uh, plus six at one book. So uh, mm-hmm. Knicks plus six uh, is I'll add that one to the slate as well. I have a bunch more I want to talk about, but let's go ahead and get to y'all's best bets jay let's start with the minnesota timberwolves they lose carl anthony towns indefinitely with a calf strain it's pretty severe don't know when he's going to be back um obviously this is a interesting spot here first game without cat they've had trouble trying to integrate all those pieces together it gets a little bit simpler they're facing a memphis team uh that quite honestly i think is still overrated in the market Mm -hmm. This open four, there's still fours out there. There are it's starting to move towards three and a half, though, as we record this. When you wait, when this goes up tomorrow morning, if you're listening to this on Wednesday morning, there may be threes or lower in the market. So I'd like to hear from you what number you don't want it at. Uh, but what's your cap for the Wolves plus four plus three versus the Memphis Grizzlies? 
Yeah, I like the Wolves here uh, to win this game. So you could wake up, it could be Wolves minus one. Uh, I'd still take it. So that's the only way I'm looking at this game. They they basically have to win the game. This is a winnable game. It's a bounce back spot as well. Um, so you obviously you have Cat out. This, in my opinion, addition by subtraction as well. Um, because like you said, they were trying to integrate Gobert and Cat. It's not working, guys. I mean, we, we just have to be real with ourselves. It wasn't working when Gobert went down. And it was just Cat. They seem to play better. Uh, it's just, they're just better off with one of them over there. And I think they're better off with it just being Gobert because he can. And kind of stay uh pay, stay in the pain play that rover type of uh type of position there but you have playoff revenge here plus same season revenge here man so i am taking the playoff revenge spot here it's a must win spot here for the wolves man they were they just talked about it they were uh playing some of their best basketball had the longest win streak in the nba won five straight games and then now they've uh now they've dropped the past few uh, the last three games so lost three straight in desperate need of a win you got the grizzlies 0 and four against the spread last four versus a team with the losing record also one and five ATS last six fall in the game that they covered. But regardless of all that, the stats and trends, uh, this is a field play for me. I feel like the will the Wolves put it together here. They match up well with the Grizzlies here. I'm taking them here at the home uh, as the home dog. Uh, I'll be honest with you, man. You can even put me down for Wolves money line. I, I, that's the way I'm taking them. It's either going to win the game or going to lose by 20 again. Yeah, I think I'm only going to play the money line. I don't think I'm going to play the spread. It's too tight. It, free throws get you home on Memphis if they're up at the at, at their – so as somebody that bet quite a bit on the Wolves plus two and a half games and that hit in the uh, in the series, in the first round series, I, like that was my biggest play in the first round last year. I was I was like hammering. This is a good matchup for Minnesota. So I'm totally with you on the matchup side. I actually think that Cat being out helps them because, look, mm -hmm. Memphis isn't going to bench Steven Adams for this game because you don't do that in a regular season contest. You don't match up your personnel in a regular season game. In the playoffs, you do. You saw them, they sat Steven Adams after game one of that series because you can't play drop coverage versus the Wolves. If you play drop coverage versus D'Angelo Russell, he will tear you apart. And that's what he did last year. It was crazy because Dela went nuts in all of their regular season matchups. And then Taylor Jenkins after game one was like, well, that ain't going to fucking work. <laughs> Steven, love you. Need you to sit down, mate. Steven says, hey, no problem. Because Steven's <laughs> a good guy. And then... They go small and they wind up pulling that series out, mostly because the Wolves kept pissing down their own leg. That's what makes me nervous here is I always get worried. What if, if, like, if this is a close game, I'm going to be sweating bullets. I will go ahead and play this money line with you, though, because I do agree. Look, Towns being out, the market, it's. I think it's very telling that this thing opened at this kind of a number. Like, Cat goes out. The, the Grizzlies are still favorites on the road. Mm-hmm. And the and this line moves back towards Minnesota, right? If we look at this, the the big thing here is let's give Towns two points, right? So let's take the three and let's push it to let's push it to five, or let's push it to one. Let's push it to one for for if if Towns plays. So if we flip the four and a half for home court, you can do six or four, whichever you want. Let's do be conservative and do four. This is still Memphis minus five and a half at home. That feels like a lot for teams with comparable talent, no matter how the Wolves have played. So mm. I'm I'm with you on this. I do think the best play is the money line. I just think that, that for a straight ROI, I think taking the points, you're losing an opportunity because I don't, tr if this is a close game, if it is a nail biter, I trust Memphis to execute in the clutch more. Does that make sense? Yep, makes perfect sense. I think both of them hit points, and uh, I usually always take the points. If you're going to give them to me, I always take them. Uh, sure. Then I put a I put a little bit on the money line, the sprinkle. So uh, I always say if they if they give me points, I just always take them. I've been focused a lot on trying to get the the best ROI, and especially like if you're going to get the kind of opportunity. I mean, I'm seeing this a plus one forty. Like there's a plus one forty Minnesota out there in the market right now. That's a really good number for this matchup at home in this kind of spot. I'll, I'll say this, done a lot of research in, ter in terms of how teams react when a guy is injured and out. A lot of times guys step up. This is an opportunity mm -hmm. for the younger players or for a guy that doesn't get a lot of minutes to step in and play. Or for this is like a great opp opportunity for Anthony Edwards, right? Like Edwards has been kind of frustrated that he's like on stuck on the outside because he got to run deal. He gets a big usage bump now. He gets more touches with Cat out. Mm -hmm. And I think that Edwards is going to respond to that. So uh, again, I like this play quite a bit. Sean, you got any thoughts on this one? No, I'm with you guys. You guys have talked me into the <laughs> – you guys might have talked me into the money line on Minnesota. I think it is interesting. You, you say – I haven't I haven't dug into the numbers as much as you probably, Matt, on just the stars going out. But you see it on a night-to-night, week-to-week basis. Big names go out. Other guys step up, and they they end up winning out, winning outright in some of these games where they're big, 
dogs losing their star. You see it all the time. So this is a really interesting spot. I think and Edwards is, is gonna that that he's gonna enjoy that usage bump. And um I think Gobert gets to just go back to what he he was still trying to fit in. He cause kinda yeah. like, okay, now I know exactly what I need to do. This is my this is my bread and butter anyway. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm looking forward to watching it. Yeah, I mean they're just gonna spam pick and roll now. Like that's yeah. better for D'Lo and it's better for Gobert. Like this gets easier for them without having to figure out how to make it work with Cat too. Exactly. Um, now I don't think Cat was the problem. I think Cat was trying to get everybody involved, but this just simplifies things. They get to be basically at like most NBA offenses, right? High pick and roll, one five, spread the floor. Mm-hmm. Simplify it. Uh, all right, let's move to this game that you're both on in this one. That's the Sacramento Kings. Uh, minus four. I am. I'm very interested in this one. I have looked at this a number of ways. I originally had this on my slate and I backed off. Uh, so the Kings are minus four and a half taking on the Indiana Pacers. Jay, we'll start with you and then we'll go to Sean's uh, cap. Why do you like the Kings here? Minus four and a half versus the red hot 12 and eight Indiana Pacers. Yeah, well, you could argue that both teams are red hot. I know that the Kings have lost three straight, but they've went up against three top tier teams as well. But the Pacers, they were facing a lot of bottom tier teams, Sean, you know, my guy. But this is a bounce back spot off three straight losses. They're three and one straight up and against the spread last four meetings. Um, They're also 10 and one against the spread last 11 games with one day rest, five and two against the spread last seven home games. Uh, They're seven, three against the spread last 10 versus winning road teams. So they play up to their competition and they also play down to their competition. So, I mean, come on now, guys. Guys, this is a big game here. You got Halliburton coming back to Sacramento, but not only that. So you have one guy, you have Halliburton and Buddy Hill going back to Sac, so they're going to be motivated. But you also have De'Aaron Fox, who he wants to show some, show that he was the right decision. Um, and he's balling right now, playing at an all-star level. Uh, uh, Sabonis as well. He's absolutely balling out. And I think the key here is Davion Mitchell coming off the bench here. Um, his his minutes while he's playing up against Halliburton, we really need him to, to sh- uh, try and shut down Halliburton here. But regardless, uh, and the Pacers, in uh, for let down spot, Sean. You know, they're coming off a big um that, that big win, man, where the, the uh, game winning shot. You can see it afterwards. They were really happy, probably went out and partied after man, man. Who knows? They're in LA, but uh late night spots I always talk about it. East Coast to West Coast. Uh, when it gets to the second half of this one, I really think this is gonna turn into a sleepy spot for the Pacers here. Uh, this isn't the Lakers, the old Lakers here that you can really run them off the floor. We have to remember this team was down 16 to the Lakers as well. So this road trip, West seven game West Coast road trip, this is where the Pacers uh, uh, bottom out in my opinion uh, and I believe this is a game where they lose as well so and I like the money coming on as well give me the Kings here minus the four still like it at four and a half as well okay Sean let's hear your cap on it yeah and Jay you forgot the the other big revenge spot and Sabonis playing playing Indiana for the yeah. first time since the move I really really like this spot for the Kings minus four minus four and a half I'd play it up to five three games in four days for the Pacers they look terrible against the Lakers until that late in the fourth quarter. They looked really bad. Lakers collapsed. They needed a lot to go right to get that W at the buzzer. Go look up the clip of uh, Halliburton talking about going through that last four seconds, by the way. Mm-hmm. Amazing clip of him breaking it. down what he was what he was seeing, what he was processing, going through that. But that said, Kings just had a tough loss as well. You heard, Jay, three straight losses, a tough loss against the Suns team. But, but it was a close game the entire way. Biggest lead for the Suns in that game was – 10 points. The Kings were up seven points at one time. Booker goes crazy, scores 44. He couldn't miss the mid. He was cooking on the mid-range side of the game, and they still had a chance to win that game late. Also, we talk about the the, this is the second game back at home for Sacramento. Mm -hmm. We always key in on teams coming home off a three-game road trip, just like the Kings were. The Suns were their first game back. They got that relaxation back. They hooked up with their friends and fam. They almost beat a really good Suns team. Now it's their second game back after losing three straight at home. They're going to be ready to get back in the win column 100%. And also, I feel like these teams are really similar on the offensive side of the ball, but the Kings are a bit better. Mm -hmm. Sack has six guys that score in double figures on a nightly basis. The Pacers have five. Kings are scoring 119 and giving up 117 tonight. The Pacers are scoring 116, giving up 114. Both top seven in turnover to assist ratio. Kings fourth at 185. The uh, the Pacers are seventh at 1.80. They're both identical in pace, right above 102 possessions a game. Kings more efficient, true uh, shooting percentage. Second in the NBA at 61%. They've been burning the net down. The Pacers are at 57%. 
Bring, I'm coming right back to Sabonis, a big-time revenge spot. He hasn't played the Pacers since the move out to Sacramento. He's going to get busy. I really like this spot. And like Jay said, the Pacers have been hanging out in L.A. Remember, before they played the Lakers, they played the Clippers. So mm -hmm. they've been out in L.A. for quite a while. They get a big W. I love this spot. Kings coming off of three straight L's, almost beat the Suns. And the, the Pacers almost got run out of the building and probably should when they played the Lakers. They ended up getting the W at the buzzer there. Kings bounce back in a big way at home. Second game at home coming off the little three-game road trip. They get it done in a major way, I believe. I can't get there. I can't, I cannot join you. I will, I will, I'm rooting for you. Hope it cashes. Uh, I can't get there. And the reasons one, my number just, it's right. It's right on this. I've got this on the dot for where this, this game is at. Uh, I looked at since 2010, right? So during the entire time when the Lakers have sucked ass and then this brief period where they were relevant with LeBron. And then again, when they've sucked ass, I looked at the game after when it's a away game, like you play the Lakers and then you have an away game after the ATS rates about 48%. So a little bit below, like there's a little bit of an edge in fading them. It's small, it's slight, but you got a little bit of an edge there in fading them. So that backs it up this season, small sample. It's just four and four. So nothing really to make uh, hay, hay about there. Um, I don't know the makeup of the Pacers team well enough to know whether or not they're the type of team that would have gone out after that Lakers game and enjoyed LA nightlife. Yeah. Right? I think, but I think, I think either way, that's like the bottom of the cap for me. That's like a, that's like yeah. dessert, you know, that's frosting mm -hmm. on the cake. I think that's the very last thing I'm looking at. That's, that would be an extra if they went out. I just think the Kings are going to get back on track at home. They played really tough against the Suns, And the, like, like Jay said, I'm with them all the way. The Pacer, this is a, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to slow up here a little bit on this road trip going to Sacramento. Uh, I like the Kings here. I will tell you. Uh, so this, this number is the total is two thirty nine in this game. Yeah. I I think I like the over. <laughs> like, <laughs> Look, this is the number four. So dunks and threes, which I'm always talking about. They got offensive possession length. Like literally how quickly do you score? And this is the Pacers who are fourth versus the Kings who are first. Okay. I've got, I've got this, this modeled at two fifty plus. Like it's, I'm looking at like, yeah, like it looks like it's going to be like 130, 125. Now that seems a little obvious. So I think I'm only going to do a half, half unit play on it, but I do think I'm going to play the over uh, and we'll see if the Kings can get it done. All right, let's go to some of mine. Uh, first one off the bat is pretty simple here. Uh, I'm taking the Boston Celtics. Uh, they are eight point favorites versus the Miami Heat. This line has already started moving in uh, Boston's direction. It's now nine as we record this in the market. Uh, I got an eight and a half, actually. It opened eight. Uh, I still like it at anything that's – I like it at anything to 10. Um, Miami's without Jimmy Butler. They're without Gabe Vincent, so they've got injuries. So you got to factor those in. I think a lot of times in betting, especially in betting discourse, right, in content, there's a big idea of, like, this is the spot when that ends. I think this regresses. Like, they're due for some shooting regression. I've gone the other way where I'm just like, if unless you have reason, unless your number says that you should fade it, if your number backs it and the team's been hot, don't let that scare you off. Like ride the hot, ride that hot hand. Celtics have just been destroying everybody. This is the best offense in the league. This is the best team in the league. They are better than everybody else. And Miami has quite frankly been unimpressive this season. They've gotten like they're going to be scrappy. They're going to be tough. Um, the my numbers say to play the over in this game. Definitely not going to play that because Miami can definitely play some defense. That's the one thing that they're good at. But without Jimmy Butler. I just simply don't – I think with Jimmy Butler, they can't hang. So without Jimmy Butler, I definitely don't think that they can hang. Uh, I will go ahead and I will lay the eight with the Boston Celtics. Jay, is it too much for versus a team that they faced in the Eastern Conference Finals, even with the injuries? I don't think it's too much. Um, I mean, I'm not betting against the Celtics right now. It's real simple with their games. I mean, I don't even have to really break down the game because I know that either I'm taking the Celtics or I'm staying off. Um, obviously, they've been very hot. It is hard to go balls to the wall dead long, but I always say it, they're not even really trying out there. They're just playing their style of basketball, and teams just can't keep up. So it's real simple here. Uh, Celtics are nothing for me here. But, yeah, you know, Matt, the, the playoff revenge will keep me off of it. Uh, he have started to play better, but they're definitely the walking wounded. Wouldn't be surprised if they lost this game by 20. First game of a home and home as well so i'll definitely watch this game and have a play for the next game yeah i was looking at 
No, I was saying I was looking at Boston here in this spot as well. And the only thing I could say about the Miami Heat was heat culture. It's like, well, you know, culture, they're going to play hard. This might be too many points. And then I had to be like, man, look, I, this is the only way you could take this is, <laughs> is to way. go with Boston. Or it's like it's like when you're betting against the Patriots or you're looking at the Patriots game, you're like, well, you know, Bill Belichick. And it's like, man, this roster is just not that good. It's similar, similar here with uh the heat i was looking and i was the only the only reason i could come come up with to take the miami heat was well heat culture so i I, i'm with you i'm with you matt these dudes are locked and loaded brogdon has unlocked a different level for those guys and then a guy who doesn't get enough love for me is Derek white Mm -hmm. he comes off he does not he's not afraid to shoot the ball he gives them offense he's not afraid to handle it they are loaded on the offensive end They, they look really really good Boston's on three and four here, which is probably baked into the line slightly, which is why it's interesting. It's still so high. Miami's on two days rest. So that's one angle. However, they rested Horford and Brown in that Mm -hmm. last game and Tatum came back and Tatum didn't play in the previous one. So Tatum's not on a three and four. Horford's not on a three and four. Jalen Brown's not on a three and four. Those things combined make me feel pretty comfortable about this. Like, I think that's negated to a large degree because of, of how the schedule shaped up. So I'll go ahead and lay it with the Boston Celtics. It's good coaching. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, Brooklyn Nets, I will go ahead and lay the five and a half. Uh, this, to me, is another just like, look, my number says that this should be more. Uh, I, I'm a little, frankly, surprised that this is only this was only five and a half at open when I got it. It's six now. I think you're good to six and a half. If in the morning this is seven, okay, we're, you're chasing too much steam at that point. Um my numbers say that this is that this is a good matchup. Look, my numbers love the Nets, and I can't really figure. Like I've dug into it and been like, why, why do you love the Nets so much? They're 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 they are one of the only teams that's top fifteen in half court offense, half court defense, transition offense, transition defense. Like I regret to inform you, as Nets hater number one, that the Brooklyn Nets are pretty fucking good. Mm-hmm. Um, that KD guy had himself a night the other night, and I don't think anything's stopping him until he gets hurt. He'll probably suffer an injury at some point. Kyrie's not getting in the way. He's not being a distraction right now. Knock on wood. We'll see if tomorrow he makes some sort of insane claim. Um, <laughs> but right now, that's not a problem. I like where the, I think, look, I think Jacques Vaughn was, was a massive upgrade. I think that even though I don't want to pin all of their problems on Steve Nash, that's not fair. Steve Nash was definitely not the solution. And Jacques Vaughn is more of the solution. Meanwhile, look, I think the Wizards are good, but I got the Wizards. The, both these teams are in a three and four spot. I got the Wizards in a three and four on the road spot after a really, really big victory the other night behind Porzingis's insane performance. I I don't trust KP in back-to-back games. Don't think that that's something that I've got to worry about. Now, KP may have himself another night because the Nets have let a lot of these dynamic big men, if you're a good big man, they go off versus Brooklyn. But I don't know that the Wizards have enough overall. And especially, I also think that the bench unit has been playing great. They've shifted Mm -hmm. some of the rotation in Brooklyn. Um, and in general, this is just a numbers play. I, I just show an edge on this of too much. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay it with the Brooklyn Nets. Jay, am I crazy? No, I have the Nets here written down as a lean as well. They're due yeah. to cluster wins. Um, they did last time they faced off against this team, they beat them by 42 points. Um, that does somewhat hold me off again. Just as a basketball player, you remember when a team whoops yeah. kicks your ass by 42 points. But on the other side, Matt, you can say that this team's ma- matched up really well versus them. That was the first game without Kawhi, uh, without Kyrie as well. So they were supposed to be shorthanded. They were three point underdogs in that game. Absolutely smoked them. This is the third straight home game for the Nets. Uh, much they have the much better bench and the much better guards wizards due to regress obviously after scoring 142 points they're also 0 and three straight up and against the spread last three road games uh one only other thing that kept me off the nets here this is their sixth game in nine days they were traveling all over the place came back to the house uh so at least they're, they've been at the house not really traveling but didn't like that they played so many games um in nine days i think that's the next step up after the fifth and seven the sixth and nine is also not necessarily a buy spot but uh only way i could play is this one is nets man uh only way i could play here is nits any lean on this sean yeah i think i'm gonna walk down the street and go catch this game so i'm looking forward to it like you said kd is just locked in and Kyrie is supplementing that the that, that's the, the the focal is kd he's been doing his thing they did beat these guys by 40 plus the last time they played and there's a couple guys that were on that roster for the nets that are out are going to be out for this game in this matchup but yeah they will remember that and um, i'm looking forward to seeing the tilt but if you get up to seven, I would actually start to look at uh, the Wiz here, but okay. we'll see where it goes. All right. Uh, f- my final best bet, and we'll talk about a few other ones. Uh, 
I got got to tell you, uh, I got to tell you, Sean, I, I'm, I rode the Knicks on Tuesday night. I'm going back to the well and I'm doing it versus the Milwaukee Bucks. And I can't believe I'm doing that because I talk <laughs> oh. up those Bucks all the time. Not a division game though, Jay, not a division <laughs> game. Um, look, I, this checks a, a bunch of boxes for me. Uh, the number here, because Milwaukee's offense has been so miserable, I make this much closer to pick them in New York. Now, Knicks on a, are on a back to back. Okay. That's, you, that, that, that's probably not good. I looked this up. Since 2000, since the bubble, right? Mm -hmm. Last two seasons under Tibbs, 19, nine and one against the spread on back to backs, 19, nine and one. This makes sense, right? Tibbs plays them to the bone. So <laughs> no, take no prisoners. Don't back off. Don't be like, ah, oh, that's okay. It's a back to back. No, like got to win these games. These, this is when it's toughest. This is when we're going to go the hardest. Um, I like the matchup a little bit because of how the Knicks defend. They've actually been a surprisingly kind of tough defensive team this season. The Bucks offense has a lot of stretches where they just get really bogged down. I I'll say this. We don't have a lot of wiggle room on this line. I don't, I don't want to get this. If this moves by morning and you wake up and all of a sudden this line is uh, has moved down. Now this opened at five and it went to five and a half. So it looks at like the public or, or sharps around Milwaukee mm -hmm. and that's fine. If you wake up and this is six, great. If it's moved back down, like I don't want this anything below five. Uh, I don't even feel great about it at five, to be perfectly honest with you, because we're still in free throw range. But I do like the the Bucks, uh, the Knicks' chances here versus the Bucks. Um, I, a, a part of this is I think the Knicks are actually playing pretty well. I think they're playing better than the record kind of indicates. And my number likes this. The spot's good for the Knicks on a back to back. That's factored into the line. Uh, I just can't get to the number here, even with it being it seems short. I have a feeling you might be able to get this at a better number by the time that you're listening to this episode, but I'll go ahead and I'll grab the points with the Knicks, even on the back to back. Sean, I'll start with you. Can, can I trust the Knicks versus Giannis? Is that a thing I'm, I can really do? Yeah. It's spooky because they haven't played very well in the garden. Right. And yeah. that's kind of where you, you, you get the, I was talking to John Henson, who's on the, who's on MSG with me on Thursdays. And he talked about the MSG bump. And we know people try to go in there and go crazy. Stars, John Morant just had a triple-double the other night on Sunday. And he said he, – he actually gave me a really good context of, like, how real it is. He's like, people are talking about it in the locker room. People are looking at uh, stat sheets in the in middle of quarters. They're really trying to go crazy and put up big numbers in the garden. And Giannis is no different in that sense. If the Knicks were playing a lot better at home, I'd feel a lot more comfortable taking the points. Um, but this is just a, a spot. They play the really bad teams really tough. And then when they play really good teams, they seem to they seem to come up short and and haven't been too successful. I've been watching them on a game-to-game -game basis. That's, that's just how it's been. And th they'll play you tough. But they just can't close it out. Jalen Brunson has been playing out of his mind, but he doesn't get a lot of help when when Julius Randle doesn't get going. Like, for example, Julius got going early today on his birthday, by the way, or yesterday, I should say, since this is the Wednesday edition. But he got rolling and he continues to roll. When he doesn't get involved early, he tends to fade. If Jalen Brunson can get some help, they have a shot, but they haven't been playing very well at home. And we know how Giannis can get on a big stage like the Garden. A lot of this is just, the numbers tell me that Milwaukee is not as good as their record, that they are a lot scarier. Than... What do we know about Middleton? I know that he's that, still that, out. He's confirmed uh, out Wednesday. Yeah. He's still out. So, I mean, I, I assume you're with me, Jay, since you've been talking, you've been looking for spots to fade Milwaukee every week on this show. I assume that, <laughs> that you're with me on this. Yeah. I think the books are overrated. I'll be honest with you. Um, I have the books written down here as a lean though, man. I also think that the Knicks are a fade right now. And Sean said it at the house as well. They're only three, six and one against the spread last 10. Man. I just, I don't really understand how you're a professional team. You don't play well at the house, but it could be to what Sean's saying. It's a, it's the arena that they play in. It just happens to be that, that they happen to play in New York and Madison square garden and guys want to go in there and have their best game, but you have the books four and no straight up and against the spread last four versus the Knicks. They obviously have the rest advantage four and one against 
against the spread last five versus road uh, on the road versus uh, losing teams as well. And the Knicks, like you said, Matt, they are 18 and five against the spread last 23 back to backs. But um, I don't like that they, 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 they're obviously the worst team at the rest disadvantage as well. Um, so it, it's a tough game for me. Obviously, the public is all over the books. Um, but Matt, I do agree with you, but that you have to find spots to fade the books. I just I don't know if this one's it. I, I had the books written down as a lean. That's the only way I could play the game. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Knicks were a scrappy type of team and uh, and could cover this number. Uh, do you know the? Uh, you're gonna need quickly out there for sure. You need all hands on deck to uh, to cover this game versus the books. That's for sure. Maybe I'll get lucky and the and the the Bucks will take it off. Maybe they'll just <laughs> rest it. It's, man, it's a garden. That's never gonna happen. Damn it. I'm probably. I'm already well, regretting this one. With a five, with a five point number, I like to look. Does this team have a good shot to win? If I'm going to take the five, yeah. I also think they they have a chance to win the game outright. And I, I think this is a tough, tall task for the Knicks on a back to back to come back home where they haven't been playing well to beat Giannis and the Bucks. Well, man, uh, real quick, I just want to say they did win in a blowout win, so it's not like it went down to the wire. So, so I'm down to say. Yep. Um. One more I've got is just the Thunder minus five. This is basically reflects that the market still is. This is this number says that they are way too anchored to preseason power ratings. There's no way that you can watch the Thunder and watch what Shea Gilgis Alexander is doing and have them be a five point favorite at home versus the San Antonio Spurs. This is the worst team in the league. Like they are the worst <laughs> team in the league by a margin. It is not close. Like credit to to San Antonio for going five and five in their first ten to be like, no, we're not tanking. No one paying attention. Okay, the start of the season's over and takes away. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is, it, it, I can't understand this number. Um, what is there? A, is there an injury I'm not aware of? Is there uh, some sort of pox on the Thunder? Like what is what is happening? I guess. Look, it says SGA questionable. SGA is yeah. questionable with a with a left hip contusion, so he's got uh, he's got a hip bruise. So I guess here's the question. I'll go ahead and wait because of that. So, Jay, if Shea doesn't play, is this number right? Man, I don't want to play the Spurs. Uh, regardless of numbers, man, this team is horrible. And then Jacoperto and Sochan are out. When I saw that, I was like, man, this team is really about to go on a – I mean, they're already not the deepest team. And then you get two of your hardest playing starters out. Um, I can't go near that team. I, I was to be honest, I'm not laying points with OKC without SGA, but I can't okay. I can't get to the Spurs. I'm sorry. I just right. Sean, if SGA if SGA plays – this number, like, even if it goes up, like, let's say it's in the middle and it's like a point and a half. Like, what what's a what's a bad number for for even for OKC? Like, I don't, I don't think OKC is great. I just think the Spurs are that bad, Sean. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I had it written down as a lean as well, uh, and I was, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to get to the window on um the Thunder as well. Let's talk about this contusion. Like, give me like we we call that a we bumped into the table at the house. <laughs> Jalen Jalen Brunson had a contusion on Sunday night, and he went crazy against the against the Grizzlies. Like mm. that that's almost like a disguise as get a guy yeah. a little day off, or maybe he wants to take a day. Off. That SGA with the thigh contusion doesn't mean anything. <laughs> but the fact that you know if he is on the he like it or not, he is questionable on the injury report. But yeah, I mean. If you take off, I really like Keldon Johnson, man. Every time I watch his game, I really like him. But outside of him, yeah, that team is horrific. <laughs> and every single game, actually, I look at the Thunder and I'm like, how is this line, this number, even when they're dogs or or favorites? And I tend not to get to the window. This might be a spot where SGA gets cleared. They should take care of business against a really bad San Antonio team at home. All right, I got two more I want to bounce off of you. Uh, Raptors plus one, I haven't bet yet. My numbers say that this leans Pelicans. My number says like, oh yeah, no, this is Pelicans. Like the Pelicans should be way bigger favorites here. Uh, I got an interesting stat for you guys. I got a trend for you. So what I was messing around with today was how do teams perform after they play a team? Um, I got started on this kick last year because what happened was every team would play the Nets and then the next game would go under on their team total because they had to actually play a real NBA team. And that that defense was tough after you have to play a tough one. The opposite is somehow true this season. This is a weird one. Um, but with, you know, the Pelicans um, coming off of a pretty close game, they're actually in a pretty uh, disadvantageous spot here. 
um, based off of that, because after you play OKC, teams this season against the spread are 6, 13, and 1. That's just 32%. They're 8 and 12 straight up after playing OKC. And that actually, if you're like, okay, but why? Like, what's the, that's a trend, that's a number, but what's the correlate? Like, what does that actually mean? Michael Malone this season was talking about having to play the Thunder. And somebody asked him, like, what's it like trying to, like, with OKC's kind of collection of talent? And Malone said, it's like a root canal. He's like, they're just tough. They're disciplined. They drag at you. They play physical. And they try and beat you at every single edge. This is a really well-coached team. Mm -hmm. And teams in that spot, I think, take something out of you, which I think that, you know, a a big emotional win, let down spot here for the Pels, a Raptors team that's got Siakam back and is a badass the number is what freezes me. Now, the my numbers aren't going to account for Siakam, and even if I add him in, I can't get to a spot where it says to play Toronto, so I feel stuck here. My team cap, the spot cap, says Toronto. My number says Pelicans, so I'm going to stay away. But, Sean, do you have any thoughts on on trying to help me sort this out? No, because I didn't, break, I didn't dive too much into this because it was clearly the hardest game on the board. There's so many other spots that we were looking at going back and forth. And that we like, I I, cl- I looked at this game. I was like, yeah, I'm not touching this game. Period. Point. Like it's the toughest game on the board, flat out. For all the things you just laid out, for I, I thought the Pels were going to blow. Out the, this is that's kind of what I was getting at with the Thunder. I thought the Pelicans were going to run the Thunder off the floor, even with um, I don't, I'm blanking on even with Bi out and even with McCollum out. I'm like yeah. they should still take care of business against the Thunder. They didn't, right? They 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 just got that win. It was a close game throughout so this was the toughest game on the board clearly for me this is a stay away spot for me jay you got thoughts yeah i can only look towards pelicans here i'm actually really close to taking them here as well uh one thing i don't agree with man i don't think that was a big emotional win over the thunder there uh really a lot of teams kind of look over them that's really why i think the thunder kind of stick with you now don't get it twisted they do have really good guards i i mean it's not that i disagree with you're saying i just feel like it could be a little bit more on the 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 height advantage the the change you see what i'm saying but the the guards are really great for the thunder i really like what they're doing coaching i mean they still have a a boatload of draft picks but all right let me get to it pelicans four no against the spread and three and one straight up last four versus the raps they're seven and three at home and it's also key as well because the raptors are three and seven on the road so they hadn't really been playing well on the road the pelicans won six of the last eight games and seven of the last ten they have the defense to match up with the raptors as well raptors only one and four against the spread last five road games first uh, first game on the road after three games uh, three home games and they have the nets on deck as well so uh, i'll be honest with you i think this line's a little short that's mainly because ingram's out cj still uh questionable here he should be back here but i think even more man we might should be looking towards the under here two of the best mm-hmm. defensive teams in the league two slow paced teams as well I, I don't i can't see why this game doesn't go under like 215 in my opinion i think 224 is way too many uh i think i have to make a play on i hate playing totals guys but um this is one where two really good defensive teams the raptors can can play sticky defense for what the pelicans like to do this is a dead under spot if you ask me i think it's a little bit easier than trying to figure out who's going to win all right, last one is I want to touch on. Um, we're doing this for NBA Bet Stream. You can catch it on League Pass. We're doing Rockets versus Nuggets. I was at the game first half the other night, uh, at where the Nuggets played absolutely zero defense in the first half and still were ahead at half. Uh, I will have props and all sorts of angles and be live betting this. Go to League Pass, check out your stream options, and you follow along the game from a betting perspective. We have lots of fun on there. Make sure to check it out. Uh, Jay, I want to talk about this with you though, specifically. Okay. Like you're always playing like the revenge spot. That's such a big mm-hmm. part of your cap. Yeah. What do you do when it's the situation when you're facing a team twice in a manner of days at this home and home situation? Like what is, what is your approach to those games in particular in this baseball type type of, of event? Well, I don't bet every one of them. I usually sure. like to look toward, first off, I like to watch the first game uh, and not make a play on that game, but I like to come back in the second game with a, with most likely the team that lost. And I can't tell you, I did kind of forecast this when I was rooting for the Nuggets to blow them out in the first game, because in this game, I'd like to take the Rockets. What do you want to, when do you want to fade the Nuggets? You want to fade them before a big game. They do have the host. I mean, it's not that big, but it was an Eastern Conference matchup, but you want to face, you want to fade them before a bigger game. You see what I'm saying? So uh, they'll probably come in here like 
like, oh, we just beat the Rockets. We don't really care. That's just the Nuggets. They they can really come out lack of day school and not play defense. And I feel like this time around, if they don't come out locked in, uh, the Rockets could keep this one a little bit closer than people think. So um, to to quick uh, quick answer to that, Matt, I like to take the team that lost the first time around. So I was looking at this since two thousand and since the bubble, right? There's like that's how everything is in life. Since before the bubble and after the bubble. <laughs> uh, We've had a bunch. That's when the NBA really started to institute these because they wanted to cut down on travel because the Mm -hmm. schedule was shortened, right? So looking at that sample in particular, facing the same team within within three days, at home, you were a favorite in the first one and you're a favorite in the second one. Those teams are 61% against the spread. Uh, That's overall. Now at home, if you're at home for the second one and the first one, it goes up to 60 1.5%. 1.5%. So a little bit better. That's pretty tough there. I think that's one of the things I, I've gotten to with these spots, Jay, is I look for the team that lost the first one if the second one is in a different location. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. if it's home or away, but it's got to be the the first on, on one in one team's place and mm-hmm. the second game on the other. Because I think if it's if it's at home. I don't think you're able to get the same kind of advantage. I think especially what you want is you wanted to lose the first one on the road. Then you play them at home inside of a week. You're pissed off. You just lost to them. You remember you're familiar with the opponent and the crowd behind you. I think that gets you past. Mm -hmm. I think that's one reason we see this. Now the number is 12 and a half here and it's bouncing around at 11 ish. (laughs) Nuggets covered the first one, right? So I, there's a possibility that they run him out of the gym again. The biggest reason for you not to take the Rockets, this team has the worst fucking shot discipline of any team I've ever seen. Like all first half, first half, they're dicing them, right? Pass, pass, pass. Nuggets are like, I don't want to guard. You're the Rockets. Mm, right. Stop. And they just were cannon trays. So what happens? They come out of the half. The Nuggets play with a little bit more intensity, but more than anything, Kevin Porter Jr. and Jalen Green just decide, no, we're hitting threes. <laughs> we're hitting threes, so I'm just going to start bombing it. It's like, no, man, you were creating good looks by passing the fucking ball. Like, you got to stick with it. So I, I, there, there's no way I'm on Houston in this game. Um, I, I am only looking Nuggets, which that's a lot of, of points to lay. What I want to also look at is three-point props because I do think we're going to see a repeat of that first game and just mm-hmm. see the the Rockets cooled off in the second half. But again, I, I don't think the Nuggets are going to change their defensive approach or effort. I could yeah. see this game going over, but I want to be looking for three-point props. Yeah. Yeah, man, I could see this being a close game. Uh, I just, I really seen it be coming down to a seven, eight point game. So I won't spend too much time on it, but you said it. The way that the Nuggets play defense, I don't want to ask them to win back to back games versus the same team, the lackluster team as well. I'm pretty sure they're coming in here like, this is the Rockets, man. We just smack these guys up. This is going to be easy. And I don't like to be uh, betting on those type of teams. I'm going to put the Nuggets in a parlay, Sean. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to put the Nuggets <laughs> in a parlay. Yo, put them on. No way. And then when they're the one that loses, when I when I hit <laughs> Nick's money line and and lose on Nuggets, I I will just be able to to feel great about it. Be awesome. Yo, tie them up with uh, the Hawks. I think that's an interesting spot against the Magic. They've lost a ton in a row. Yeah, I don't know why that number is so short. We could. I, I know we're running out of time. We could talk about that. Uh, that's an interesting spot though. They got they got, they got a couple guys that can slow up Ben Carroll. We know about Franz and Bol Bol, but I, I I don't see three straight losses for the Hawks. I think that's an interesting spot as well. I'm going to dig in more there, and maybe I can drop something in the Action Network app with a little write-up. All right, let's run down the best bets again. Jay's got Kings minus four, Wolves plus four. Sean's with Jay on Kings minus four and a half. We'll call it four and a half. Uh Go ahead and lay the points with the Kings versus the Red Hot Pacers. I like half of the games on the board, but specifically I like Celtics minus eight. Uh, I will keep Knicks plus five. God help me. Uh, and we'll roll with the Nets minus five and a half as well. Lean Thunder here. We'll see what else I play based off of SGA's appearance. And we'll talk about all those and more. Have a bunch of props. This is a great slate. That's why this mm-hmm. this episode went long. Great slate. Great job, guys. Follow Jay on Twitter at JMoneyIsMoney. Follow Sean on Twitter at Chicago Flow. We'll be back tomorrow with another edition of Best Bets here on Buckets. Thanks for joining us. Download the Action Network app. We'll see you guys again next time. Let's get Buckets. 